So, thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you, you guys so much. Telling us something about science today. Yeah. <laughs>
the air level when you rise up it gets less and less air. Pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Yep. Okay. So you go up to a higher elevation and that decreases the pressure. Yeah. And that it lowers the buoyancy. Okay. In the second you can add stuff to it like salt. Add salt. Okay. Salt add water. add something to it. Add something to it. Why? I have no clue. But you can you can add things to it and it for some reason it, makes it, it changes the boiling point to it. Changing the air pressure is the first way to change the boiling point of the liquid. Increasing the air pressure will increase the temperature required to boil the liquid, whereas decreasing the pressure will decrease the temperature required. At sea level, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But what about on top of a mountain, such as Mount Everest in the Himalayas? The air pressure is so low up there that the boiling point of water decreases by 29 degrees Celsius, down to 71 degrees Celsius. That is such a huge difference. And one more common way that apparently I didn't even think about when I was doing my research for this video was using a pressure cooker to cook food. A pressure cooker will actually increase the air pressure inside of it, and so the water will require a higher temperature in order to start boiling. This allows the water molecules to store more energy and be able to cook the food inside at a higher temperature than 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The second way to change the boiling point of a liquid is to add a solute. In water, a lot of people would just think of adding salt. Dissolving the salt inside the water will actually increase the boiling point of the water itself. Being a positively charged ion, sodium will actually be attracted to the negative charge of the oxygen in the H2O, and the chloride, being a negative charge, will be attracted to the hydrogen, the positive side of the H2O. This allows the water molecules to surround the sodium and the chloride, forming a dipole ionic bond between them, which is even stronger than the hydrogen bonds holding together the water molecules. Because that bond is stronger, it requires more energy to break. And thus, the boiling point of water with salt dissolved inside is higher than water with nothing dissolved inside. Finally, why do different substances stay at the bottom of the pot after you boil the water? Is the weight? Not the Breaking of the bond and re-bonding re of the sodium and the chlorine? Because it's a different chemical compound, so it's sodium chloride, so that doesn't vaporize in the same way as water, I guess, and so it gets left as a solid at the bottom. It's not that it doesn't vaporize in the same way, but a different temperature. temperature. Well, salt doesn't evaporate. Why can't it evaporate? Why can salt not evaporate? Yeah. Like, why is it not leaving with the water? What's what? Prob There's a reason. Prob probably the bond between the chlorine and the uh, and the sodium is so strong it can't be broken by um, the that, energy, that, that, that kind of that kind of energy. The you, 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 you'd be talking about a plasma level energy in order for that to happen. You might think it has something to do with the weight, but the fact is, it actually all has to do with the boiling point of those substances. Take table salt, for example. The sodium chloride in table salt has a melting point of 1,474 degrees Fahrenheit, and its boiling point is another 1,100 degrees higher at 2,575 degrees Fahrenheit. This is more than 12 times the boiling point of water. So there's no way that salt is coming out with the water when it boils. As the water molecules begin to disappear around the salt, it frees up the sodium and chloride and bonds them back together. And this is why the crystallization of salt, sugar, and other solutes begins to occur after water boils out of a pot. I actually did a test of this with sugar the other day, and I could see the exact moment when all the water had left the pot. The steam was rising out of it the entire time the water was boiling and the sugar was dissolved. But there came a point when the steam stopped, just completely stopped. And all that was left in the bottom was molten sugar. The sugar was able to take in even more heat and get to its melting point of 366 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's when the sugar turned into a liquid. As it began to cool down again, the sugar hardened and crystallized and took on chunky forms. And I, of course, couldn't help myself and I ate a few of those. So there you have it. This is why liquids will boil when you put energy into them. It's a different process from evaporation because it takes place within the entire body of the liquid instead of just at the surface. So the next time you're boiling a pot of water, take a look at the bottom and know that those bubbles there are bubbles of H2O just kind of flinging themselves around until they get enough pressure to overcome the air pressure on the top of the water. Once that happens and they start to rise and burst into the air, you know the water's boiling. So pay attention and see what you notice. And of course, as always, here's to all your endeavors.
At first, they're pretty locked in place. The hydrogen bond is pretty strong. But as you start to add energy, they start vibrating more and more and more. And then when you add too much energy, they break apart. When they break apart, it releases a molecule and goes flying up into the sky. 